Hi everybody, uh, this is Tanushri Chakrabarti joining in from Winnings 3. Welcome. So uh, we are waiting for uh, Aishwarya from uh, Mahila Saksham to join us. So Aishwarya, can you send us a request through Mahila Saksham to come on the camera please? So our session for today is uh, on the world that will be post uh, COVID-19. Hi, Tanushri. Hi, hi, Ashwarya. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's nice connecting to you today. Same here. We've been trying to do this for a while and finally we're here. Yeah. So it's nice uh, seeing you today here. Everything is absolutely fine here on lockdown. We are fine as of now. Okay, so which zone are you in? I'm at the red zone. Kolkata okay, is in the same. red zone. So, yeah. Yeah. Same. Same. So, yeah. So, basically, uh, I was telling all our viewers that we have Aishwarya today. She's just joined and all of you can see her live. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are going to take uh, questions from our viewers as well. We are going to discuss on the world that will be post uh, COVID-19, how it will be things and all for us, for uh, entire India, for entire world. So some kind of light that we are going to throw today and a discussion that is going to evolve. So hi, hello everybody again. And uh, we have Ashwarya, who is the CEO of uh, Mahila Saksham Foundation, an NGO which works on UN Sustainability Development Goal number five, which is equality via vocational skills and training and financial inclusion for women. Am I right? Uh, so I just want to make a correction. So UN Sustainability yeah. Development Goal Number 5, Gender Equality. So we work wow. towards that through wow. uh, vocational skills development and financial inclusion for women. So we work okay. towards gender equality via skill development and uh, uh, financial inclusion for women, especially okay. in rural India. Yeah. So, Ashwarya, how uh, how did this happen? How did you start, uh, you know, with uh, Mahila Saksham Foundation? And uh, well, you are a young person, actually. You're just 25. So, what yes. thoughts made you, you know, what thoughts made you uh, open an NGO on women? Can you throw some light on that? Of course. So, uh, being a woman and being in the development sector is actually a great time. Uh, and a great opportunity, that's A, but also I, throughout my career, I have uh, volunteered with several NGOs, uh, two of them being Pratham Education Foundation and Ann Foundation. And I also was an educator for a while at an elite international school. So what, the, what I realized the gap was that education was the gap among children to cross from poverty, a below poverty line to above poverty line and, in, and above the value chain. And for women, it was skill development and having financial independence. So I myself have faced some gender stereotypes in my life. And mm -hmm. uh, this is something I'm very passionate about. I just genuinely feel very strongly about the upliftment of women. And it for mm -hmm. me, it was a no brainer to start an NGO in this direction and in this specific, specifically focused on this niche. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, there were a lot of skill development focused NGOs, but not very that were catered or for women specifically. And the uh, uh, approach required to get women on board was completely different than that uh, mm -hmm. needed for men. Therefore, I saw this gap and decided to fill it by starting my own NGO. Okay. So you were an educator also prior to this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. correct. I taught English. Oh, wow. That's really yes. nice. And you have been uh, born and brought up from Mumbai itself. Yes, I have. Throughout. Okay. Okay. Born, and, bro born and raised. 
Okay. So folks, uh, Aishwarya is here today and she is from Mumbai. Any questions that you might have for Aishwarya, please, please, please do drop comments and keep watching. So Aishwarya, we were supposed to discuss today about uh, the world that will be after COVID-19. So I wanted to understand that, you know, how do you think, uh, how, what do you think, how are things, you know, being led towards and what is going to happen after this lockdown? Where are things heading towards? Uh, honestly, it's really hard to predict and I'm no expert, Absolutely. but there's one thing that I can, if I can say about the 90% of India, which is the informal or unorganized sector, they are mm -hmm. going to, I think, reskill and upskill themselves and perhaps even uh, rejoin the economy in a more agile way. They will be doing multiple things and not uh, depending on one source of income. And I think even the upper middle class and the middle class have re realized that it's very important to have several sources and revenue streams and not be dependent mm -hmm. on one because uh, some if today is corona, tomorrow it can be some other virus that can affect the entire world and you never know when calamity strikes. So mm -hmm. in order to be prepared for the worst, I think mm -hmm. uh, post-COVID people will be a lot more careful. Healthcare will get a lot more attention. And uh, in general, I think the norms that we are following of social distancing, being very hygienic, etc. will continue. Mm -hmm. So, um, how are, uh, you know, the job markets being predicted to be? Because a lot of people have already lost their jobs, daily wage laborers are no longer earning. So, how do you predict, uh, you know, this, um, the job market to go? Where is it heading towards? Uh, the job market is heading towards a slow mm -hmm. and sharp decline sharp decline i would say uh like you said the daily wage laborers have lost their jobs overnight they've lost their means of livelihood and they can no longer fend for themselves mm -hmm. uh secondly in the private sector uh there have been massive layoffs with uh, reliance also recently announcing a layoff if the uh, lockdown continues i know a couple of friends of mine who have been laid off both in america as well as india so the job market is very unstable and to say that uh, one degree can secure me is something that nobody can do anymore. You need to have mm. multiple skill sets, you need to be agile and mm. you just need to uh, be resilient in these times. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So for me, if I would like to throw some light here on this, uh, you know, yeah. uh, lockdown is actually placing a lot of pressure on the economy as well. And uh, we are on the verge of facing a serious recession world over. Right. So what are your thoughts about uh, the economic slumber? Where will that go and how will it be? Because uh, for me, it is something that, you know, even if we um, we are not heading towards, uh, we are not seeing uh, the lockdown to get over very soon. You know, people don't want governments don't want people to join back work and uh, businesses are all closing especially impacted are uh, the small and medium enterprises so Absolutely. you know when businesses have closed and there are no profits there will be no employability as you correctly said that you know people are no longer getting employed they are being removed and laid off from their jobs so how will we bounce back when there will be no money for me it's like it's very uncertain and i can see that there is no money in the future yeah. lying anywhere yeah. So, you know, how will we come back from it? How will we leave back, you know, from, from that point of view to a place where we'll again be like what we were used to be? Uh, I think that's a very good, complex question. And I, I wish I was an economist to answer that better. Uh, but I'll give it a shot anyway. So I think that... Uh, I think that the end is not in sight, which is why it makes it more uncertain. Uh, with the 2008 uh, recession, I think there were parameters that led to the bubble bursting. And uh, with the dot-com bubble, also the same thing happened. But this is more like the Great Depression. So you never know when it will uh, end, when the virus will, uh, whether there will be a vaccine in six months, whether there will be a vaccine in one year, we, never, we don't know. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really hard to predict when the end of this economic slump will be and the V-shaped curve, when will it rise again? Uh, mm -hmm. Having said that, uh, in order to bounce back as an economy, as an Indian economy, the best way to be uh, is to shop local, uh, mm -hmm. freelance and be, uh, is to shop local and to essentially uh, promote uh, foreign direct investment within India and promote Indian industries 
and made in india should be more common and whatever whatever the government proposes uh, in terms of made in india i think that is a good measure to recover the economy right right we also have a comment from akshay sodi who says that freelance and gig economy will be the new way to work since it's independent of location and based on skills right I, so thank you i agree with them completely uh, right freelance and gig economy is definitely the answer because it makes you uh, recession proof because you have a lot of options open uh, yeah right right so people who are watching uh, we are discussing on some very important topics today we are discussing on what world will be and how will will it be after covid 19 after this corona goes away in case you have comments or in case you have uh, you know your questions for us please drop in and we'll try and answer or we'll discuss along with you on on this live so it is a live uh, you know for hopes you know to build up our hopes to face yeah. what we are actually currently going through you know to come out of it with with a leap of faith yeah so uh, so uh, you know um, ashwarya uh, now when the jobs are no more there you know how will it be for the men and the women of uh, you know the world or say india how is it going to be according to you I saw two very uh, paradoxical statistics. One was that there will be seven million unplanned pregnancies that will happen due to the lockdown, and on the other yeah. hand, on the other hand, there was like a lot of divorce rate will go up because people have to really face reality and like be with each other all the time. So I don't really don't know how to reconcile with both these information. Uh, for right. women and men separately, I'd say. Uh, for women especially uh, i think they will get a lot more opportunity because they can now work from home which is amazing because that's exactly what i personally would want as a homemaker in the future or otherwise mm -hmm. like i would want the flexibility of working from home as well as having a job um mm -hmm. uh, for men uh, i honestly cannot answer that i don't have an answer to that uh, but i think uh, both men and women will have to build resilience to bounce back to find new opportunities and to really uh uh hold their ground feet feet firm on the ground and not lose sight of what's ahead of them and not lose hope right so resilience absolutely. and perseverance in these times you know things that we talk about but uh, rarely practice are some things that we need to be cognizant of yeah actually the worst affected are people from the rural india uh, you know i was uh, i was reading an article about this uh, folks who are you know in the rural india they are women from rural india who work from home and they are part of the self help groups you know so one yeah. of these ladies she was uh, telling that uh, my husband and my father in law are now inside the house because of uh, lockdown and i have to wear a long veil to cover my face when they are present and now i'm cooking yeah. and doing all the household chores i used to do it earlier when they were not there you know they were outside yeah. they had gone for some of the other things like their daily um, you know work or something but now since they are always inside i have to wear that veil and i have to cook and do other things you know which is very cumbersome for ladies so i think uh, yeah females are suffering uh, you know the most due to this lockdown with uh, domestic violence that has also increased world over so what are your thoughts on that ashwarya you know uh, through you talk about germany you talk about china you talk about india domestic violence and abuse has increased many folds and i would also request the viewers who have been watching please leave your comments on this you know what are your thoughts about the domestic violence against women and how uh, i, I i see a lot of men also watching this so you know what what exactly are your thoughts about this and you know how can you make it a better place for women in the future or right now so ashwarya uh, what's your yeah well uh, this is a very difficult question to answer uh, and honestly heartbreaking because uh, domestic violence is something that i absolutely do not condone uh it's a crime uh, married or not married having said that uh Uh, I know of a few SSGs, and they also face the similar problem, uh, because in the rural in rural India, because men and men men are more orthodox, and women have to behave a certain way because of that. Um, 
it can be cumbersome like you said i really don't know what the answer to that is except for education and awareness and communication which the ngos that are leading the way in rural uh, india are i think uh, on top of yeah mm -hmm. right uh, you know according to me it should be the government who should step in and do some measures you know uh, maybe a fund that they can arrange for the women or maybe jobs in the future that they can do for these women so that um, they are somehow uh, you know they are somehow be able to maintain the sanity that they actually need at this point of time and not only for women also men because you know men have also lost their jobs at this point of time yeah. and uh, that frustration is uh, what they are taking out on their uh, you know the females in their houses so that is always yeah. there yeah and so, uh, uh, yeah i i oh. hope i hope that in the green zones uh, things get better Hmm. but if they open the green i was seeing a picture of a watermelon today and uh, yeah. you know they had cut it open and they said that if you open the green zone it turns red so that was very meaningful and oh my god <laughs> yeah so you know the infection uh, you know i was also talking to one of these uh, friends of mine who is in siemens you know he is working yeah. uh, towards covid support and uh, he is part of the uh, molecular biology biology team and they are working towards covid-19 support and you know doing a lot of things like testing kits and other stuff so he was right. telling that only 3% to 5% of the entire population as of now is uh, you know um, immune to this disease so as soon okay. as the lockdown ends uh, the disease tends to spread even more yeah because yeah, absolutely. yeah yeah so the immunity is not built up so we we never know what happens in the later stages and lockdown yeah. according to him and according to some people lockdown is not the answer we have to raise our immunities and we have to then face this disease because ultimately it will be there it will not go because see there were various theories you know firstly people were saying that heat kills it so summers yeah. will kill it then now people are saying that sunlight will ki kill it you know so uh, so until and unless there's a vaccine in place uh, there are a lot of theories that are working around and uh, to be honest people some people have mostly people have recovered also from the disease only the yeah. ones that had low immune compromised immune systems or who were old enough have passed away so yeah. you know comparing to the world's uh, entire population that's a less number to be honest so that's there uh, now tell me ashwarya how are you spending your days you know during lockdown what what keeps you positive how are you uh, doing things you know what all are you doing at your home at your home okay uh, so i try to keep every day creative because i'm more of a right brain person so i will read a book or listen to an audio book or uh, i've started working out every day now uh so that keeps me busy and also when i'm in low spirits and i just sweat it out a little bit endorphins are released and that makes me happier and just a little more hopeful about what's to come and more productive as well uh other than that i talk to people like you i mean it's lovely networking everything's gone virtual now and uh, i'm trying to build my ngo and setting up uh, processes in place for after covid is relaxed i want to get get going and start reskilling the daily wage laborers especially women i want to get them back into the economy and they mm -hmm. will need it the most because they they need they have absolutely no uh, source of income no savings at all so i want to focus on uh, building my ngo and reskilling them as soon as possible which can only mm -hmm. happen once the lockdown is relaxed and there's some clarity as to uh, what the future be holds mm -hmm. so that's how i spend my day what about you i'd like to know about uh because i know that you're a uh, you're a mom as well yeah for me uh, yeah for me nothing much has changed because i was already working from home you know okay. i am a mother of a 5 and a half year old son so okay. you know for me the time that i used to work was when he used to be in school so okay. now that now that the schools are locked down as well yeah. and uh, you know the online sessions are on it's more of my studies than his now so you know i have to manage a lot of things at this point of time so if the if the responsibilities were already double now they have you know gone over to triple and more 
so right. that's how it is plus you know there are other shows also throughout the day that i'm doing like um, you know we call it bjp <laughs> i think i can Yeah, yeah. So what I'm, what I'm, what I was trying to say is that you know I do a lot of BJP these days, which is Burton and Jhadu and Pocha. Ah, <laughs> that's ah, that's. Ah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah. And also, you know, been cooking a lot of dishes um, to innovate uh, my cooking skills also, which were never that good. I've never been a good cook. So that's there. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've, I've I also you know, started uh, cooking some salads and some. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's really nice. That's really nice. So, um, to for people who have just joined in, I would like to uh, mention that we are talking. We have Ashwarya from, uh, you know, Mahila Saksham Foundation, which is an NGO, and uh, she is live with Winning Three, which is another forum for women. And uh, you know, we have over three thousand and more followers on Facebook, and uh, we believe in branding. We believe that women have a lot to share, just like Ashwarya. I am connected to many, many, many such powerful women, and I love to share their stories and talk to them and network with them, which enhances my skills also. So today we have Ashwarya with us in case, and we are discussing on a very grave topic, which is. um how the world is changing with covid 19 so in case anybody is interested to drop in a comment they can they are welcome you know we would love to discuss with you we would love to read out your comments and uh, we would love to uh, talk to you further about this about this topic so on that uh, now ashwarya you mentioned that you're writing a book is that correct did you mention that No, I'm not. I, I oh, you're not. Oh, you're not. No. Okay, no, you read, read a lot of books. I mean, books. I want to write a book eventually. Uh, right. I studied English literature, and I'm a. I would, to be modest, like, uh, I, I'm a decent writer. Uh, right. So I would want to write a book sometime in the future. Uh, but right. right now, I'm not writing a book. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm just focused okay. on my NGO, working out, and taking care of myself. Yeah. Okay, so uh, during this COVID nineteen, what is your NGO doing? You know what exactly? Uh, I know that you have this Russian for all uh, campaign, which is very interesting. Yeah. Can you throw yeah. some light on that, please? Yeah, I'd love to talk about it because it's actually uh, surpassed my imagination as well. So it started off as a small pilot project where we would uh, connect the donor to the grocer. And uh, our on-ground volunteers would then bifurcate the ration and deliver it to the daily wage laborers. Now, what mm -hmm. happened in this process is we've covered Kurla, we've covered Bakola, we've covered Antok Hill, we've covered parts of Dhara, we we covered Nehru Nagar, we covered Amboli, and uh, you name it, and slums in these areas, and daily wage laborers in various areas, uh, fishermen, mm -hmm. you speak of construction workers, etc., so on. and we've covered we raised in the process 20 lakhs we've helped mm -hmm. 5000 families and we've reached 30000 individuals so that's a mm -hmm. landmark uh, uh, execution from our standpoint and uh, i've done this with a bunch of volunteers and mm -hmm. uh, donors as well so that is something that we've done but honestly not even this is enough i'm helping other ngos raise money as well so there's a lot going on in this space and daily wage labor problem is a major problem that the lockdown just opposes otherwise people like you and i are are comfortable in the uh, comfort of our homes but these are the ones really uh, suffering the brunt of the lockdown so those are mm. the uh, uh, problems that we're trying to alleviate mm -hmm. okay. so yeah that's so what for yeah. all so that's right. what our ngo has been doing uh, thus far yeah right right so how how do you uh, you know how do you network how what exactly or uh, you know what are the um, sources that you use to network how do you approach organizations uh so so i attend a lot of webinars so i'm connected with the founders and ceos of a lot of ngos and some of them are on my board as well so okay. for example uh, snehalaya's founders on my board of advisors prathams program coordinator for skill development is on my board of advisor and so okay. is mr mahesh anade the uh, skill development ceo of yuva parivartan 
so okay. i get a lot of guidance from them other than okay. that my dad has always been into social work so i leverage his networks as well because okay. he's had a long network of 20 years of building uh, on ground volunteers so his network has been instrumental in uh, in by forgetting russian so far um, mm -hmm. other than that i'm just learning just like i'm just learning i'm talking to you so i'm getting to know what you do how you brand people etc so i'm just like learning and getting to know people and what they do it's an interesting right. time to work really network i feel so that's mm -hmm. i mean there's no formula uh, mm -hmm. just taking it as it comes so what are your future plans with uh, you know mahila saksham foundation i honestly want to scale it to the point where i build a model that can reskill and upskill every woman that is below poverty line and mm. uh, let's see how that goes uh, i will have more clarity post covid right now everything is in the planning and gestation period uh, right. so let's see how it goes when did you start this i started in feb 2020 i oh. had discussed it uh, discussed it with my co-founders since december but we launched in feb 2020 and 24th march the lockdown happened so oh. the timing wasn't the best but right. uh, no regrets because we made good use of the time that we had and you've already been doing a lot together as in you know you're doing the ration for all very beautifully in fact winnings 3 has an article also on that yes. you know which was a guest post from your end so that yes. was absolutely beautiful and we covered that work and yes. i think you tied up with some other organization to do this right so which was that organization can you take the name of that organization also it's called the mcm this... group my dad's my dad's organization which has the on ground volunteers Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. And what all have you been donating? You've just been donating food items, or you've donated masks and other uh, PPE also. Uh, so PPE and masks were not authorized to uh, distribute, and uh, PPE is very hard to procure also. So we mm -hmm. only donated uh, dal, rice, atta, uh, one oil, uh, herbs, vegetables, etc. So uh, mm -hmm. roti. roti out of the roti kabra makan with the noti donating right right yeah. okay uh, last but not the least uh, you know there's a lot of uncertainty going on around because of covid 19 you know uh, mostly as uh, the pm modi uh, cited on one of his interviews to the nation or addresses to the nation that jaan hai to jahan hai so you know forgetting everything else forgetting all what used to be and having that life in us having that sense that we are alive in itself is a beautiful thing as of now uh, yeah. one thing that i have realized uh, during covid 19 and during the lockdown is that i used to be very dependent on a lot of helps you know for my day to day activities which is something that i don't need anymore and second i have actually become very positive you know uh, It's like one fine day, the maid did not turn up. I used to be all cribbing about it that you know she has not come. Now how will I manage all this? But now I have actually jotted down all of these in a schedule, and I know that when I have to do what, you know, and accordingly it flows. And people have been helping in the family, so the family bonding has also increased because um, you know people are doing things together. uh you know if i am doing cooking then somebody else might help me with the burden and so on and so forth so uh, uh you know for times which were before corona you know happiness was measured by the value of the money or the material things that we had people were running after jobs people people were running after you know a lot of uh, you know material things like ye gaadi chahiye wo scooter chahiye wo bike chahiye wo ac chahiye wo fridge chahiye waisa ghar hona chahiye you know aise hamare ghar mein lanterns aur jhalar hone chahiye so that used to be the thoughts but abhi kya hai after uh, lockdown initiated i think the meaning of life and the meaning of you know happiness has shifted it has shifted from small small you know from from bigger things to smaller things the perspective is changing so what do you think about this uh, ashwarya you know has uh, our uh, you know the the way we examined and measured happiness has that changed uh, i think it's changed completely 360 degree abhi uh, recently the two events that shattered me was that 
uh, obviously covid 19 is very unfortunate but also the death of irfan khan at such a young age the death Absolutely. of rishi kapoor uh, jaise aapne bola jaan hai ja- jaan hai to jahan hai bilkul sahi kaha aapne uh and earlier kya hota tha earlier nahi depending on person to person uh, we attach and uh, we attach a state of mind to an outcome being be it a material possession be it a person be it something else now it's become more internal our locus of control has become more internal like you said aap pehle uh, irritate ho jati thi jab aapki maid nahi aati thi par abhi aapka locus of control aapne apna remote control aap, aapke aapka remote control aapke haath mein hai and you control your own mood so that is happened and that is wonderful that is a silver lining to this uh, whole situation uh, that people have understood the real value of uh, subtle trivial yet subtle joys of life i would say mm. not trivial mm. yeah yeah right 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 yeah right so uh, yeah tell me tell me what is your definition of happiness i would like to know right now yeah uh, earlier it was again i was also caught in that rat race ki you know i have to earn and i have to uh, provide sufficiently for my family and since i started uh, working i used to be a corporate employee earlier to this prior to winning three i was working with an mnc for like 12 years and uh, yeah so i have been uh, a corporate employee and uh, money used to flow in every month after you know after the salary used to come in so you know money was not a problem earlier but since i started my own setup uh, things monetarily have been a little challenging so you know that was my focus earlier but now i am i'm taking one day at a time so you know it's basically uh, i am not able to go outside i cannot do things outside but what i can do inside to make my life and make my family's life better is what i'm more focused upon along with the good health that we should be maintaining at this point of time so i am living with my in-laws also so you okay. know my in-laws are very old you know they are like 70 plus both of them so their health is also uh, of priority to us at this juncture because we cannot compromise with their health and all so uh, we have been focusing on raising the immunity of our uh, you know family by That's eating wonderful. healthy yeah by eating healthy and for example my father in law in the wee hours you know like around 5 o'clock he goes for a walk so that keeps yeah. him mentally healthy also physically healthy also because that walk gives him so he takes a round of the park we have a park just outside our house and uh, you know he takes a round of that park it gives him some mental sanity to go along with this and at that point of time there are no other people also there so uh, you know so that's been there and the family support has been immense so my son being managed by yeah 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 so i get a comment here from vivek vidan hi vivek he says that people are conscious about hygiene and health money doesn't make the world go round anymore absolutely doctors and nurses are being praised and recognized instead of athletes and celebrities absolutely. very correct hats off yeah yeah that's vivek you just Yes, yes, you've just nailed it with this. You know that's absolutely correct. If you've mentioned the correct thing, and yes, uh, doctors and nurses are uh, are new warriors at this point of time. Absolutely. Earlier, earlier we used to be like you know doctors कितना पैसा लेते हैं कितना पैसा खाते हैं. But you know अभी हमको पता है कि क्यों खाते थे या क्या जरूरत थी उनको इतने पैसों की? Because yes, uh, you know they are facing this. Uh, as the front lining as the front lining of it right absolutely so they are very absolutely nice to me yeah at risk they put themselves yeah, they at put risk themselves at risk for our yeah. uh, safety so yeah. hats off to them yeah uh, and yeah true 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 so on that note we have already crossed 6:30 it's 6:35 yeah. and ashwarya yeah. it was very nice having you on board today and uh, we got some wonderful comments from a lot of people also today which is again a very good thing especially men you know on a women's forum that's a nice thing yeah. so yeah. Um, Ash- yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah so ashwarya uh, tell me this that uh, you know anything that lastly you would like to mention before we wrap this off um i would just ask everybody to stay home stay safe stay responsible 
and to and it's not a rat race it's not a productivity race also it's okay if all you did today was breathe and stay alive and take care of took care of yourself like uh, wake up smiling uh, you're alive uh, not a lot of people are uh, uh, sleep smiling you're alive not a lot of people are yeah that's all absolutely absolutely beautiful beautiful yes so people maintain social distancing there have been a lot of videos doing rounds that people have not been bothered about uh, you know the social distancing and uh, to maintain it we have a comment from life coach neeta so neeta mehta she says that awesome listening to you ashwarya brilliant thank you so much neeta ma'am thank you so much i would love to uh, talk to her sometime yeah yeah i i'll give you her contact i have her contact okay, <laughs> so she's a wonderful person she's a wonderful person Great. and many Great. others who have joined in late we discussed about the covid 19 and you know how it changes the world and uh, we had some wonderful comments on board from many men today and uh, apart from that many people have liked our video and the discussions yes. that we had with ashwarya so yes. yes people please maintain social distancing please be safe and remember as modi ji says jaan hai to jahan hai pehle jaan bachao फिर बाद में हम देखेंगे कि क्या करना है कैसे सब कुछ ठीक करना है फिर वर्ल्ड को कॉन्कर कर लेंगे एब्सोल्युटली वर्ल्ड एंड वर्ल्ड नीडेड वर्ल्ड नीडेड दिस हीलिंग आल्सो यू नो there has yeah. been so much of videos doing the rounds about uh, wildlife roaming freely yesterday i dreamt of wildlife in my you know dream <laughs> so i saw white tigers and i don't know what not i saw <laughs> yeah and, and uh, kolkata is known for that as well right yeah like kolkata is uh, no sundarbans you know sundarbans has uh, okay the royal mind. bengal tiger yeah kolkata no, does not have know. tigers <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 west bengal is known for that yeah, yeah. right 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 yeah. and i was right. to kolkata long back for a wedding i absolutely love the city i went yeah. on i i went on the howrah bridge ke niche wo tor jo hota hai right so right howrah bridge is very pretty Howrah very bridge is pretty, pretty, very pretty. Yeah. Very pretty. So I am here for the last one year. Before that, I used to be in Delhi NCR, and okay. I used to work in Delhi NCR only. So we were there for like fifteen, fifteen years, and okay. uh, that is how I have a very huge circle in Delhi also. And uh, okay. like Neeta Mehta would like to connect to you and your NGO. That's what she said. So I will definitely be very happy to connect both of you. She is also Absolutely. from Delhi. So. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining in today. It had been a wonderful session with Ashwarya. Thank you, Ashwarya, for throwing light on some very complex questions that even you know, uh, biggies have not been able to answer perfectly as of now because the world remains uncertain. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tanushree, for having me. It was lovely speaking to you. I hope to do this again, and uh, I think we will. Yeah, definitely we will. We will be connected. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Ashwarya. Take care. Bye, bye. You too. Bye, Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.